Hello, everyone. I hope that you can see my table and hear me. I just have a swatch and a random page in my sketchbook open just for white balancing uh, uh, <laughs> processes. So if you could let me know if you can hear me and see the page or the, uh, I feel so scattered today. <laughs> if you can, uh, you can see my table and hear me well, let me know. If I'm too quiet, let me know. If I'm too loud, let me know. And I can rearrange things here. Um, we got some wonderful chatter going on in the chat here on YouTube. So if you're watching this anywhere else, make sure you hop over to the YouTube watch page and then you can take part in the chat. I will um, be looking back and forth between my sketchbook and the chat. That way, if anyone has questions about products I used or techniques or anything like that, you can let me know. And also, um, after the live stream, if you saw a, um, an a painting, an illustration that I did that you would love a tutorial on, let me know. Because generally, when I do live stream tutorials, I will go from stuff that I've drawn in my sketchbook that I haven't recorded yet. So um, that's how I get a lot of ideas for upcoming live streams. And as you know, if you're a if you're a follower of my channel, my uh, twins are going off to college this fall. Um, I'm going to have a lot of time on my hands. So <laughs> so probably there'll be a lot more live streams. So just uh, after the live stream, if you want to put a comment in the comment section under the YouTube video and let me know what you'd like to see for a live stream tutorial of any of these, that would be super helpful to me because I would know what to go for first. So I'm just scrolling back to see if anybody has any information about hearing me and seeing me. Um, a lot of people are saying hello. Okay, I hear you and see you. Wonderful. All right, I'm just going to move this stuff out of the way. And for the most part, for my World Watercolor Month, I used two sketchbooks that were handmade from my friend Rosie, who has the shop on Etsy called Artsy Rosie. She didn't ask me to talk about her or anything. I just wanted to let you know because um, this is like just this, maybe like just under five by five in size. And I didn't know if I was going to be able to get through World Watercolor Month. I was feeling very kind of overwhelmed and stressed out. And um, so when I spotted the sketchbook, I'm like, this will be perfect because if nothing else, I can do a little four by four sketch. Uh, Jinx is asking, can you let us know what book you use too to paint? And yeah, those are the, these right here from Artsy Rosie. I put a link to her shop in the video description in case you want to check them out. Now they are a bit expensive because they're hand sewn, um, but the quality is great. They're Arches watercolor paper. She does give you a couple different paper options for her different books, but primarily I think they're mostly Arches and I really like that paper. Um, but just having a small sketchbook made it so like if I was hectic, if I was busy, if I just didn't feel like I had any gas in the tank, I could still do a small drawing. And I did a couple larger pieces and one I actually sold and kind of forgot that I was going to do a wrap up. So I will actually start off with that one because I opened up the photo of it on my phone. Um, a collector named Chad Newt actually picked this one up, but we wants to flip around. And this was um, one I have a video on my YouTube channel, a time lapse of this. And there's a real time version of this in Critique Club um, for the prompt dance. And I completely forgot I do a wrap up every <laughs> every year after the uh, the challenge month. So that's that one. I just wanted to show you that before I forgot. All right. Oh, and Joe Maskey's in the house. He is a, one of our wonderful moderators. So happy that you could make it. Um, and so many wonderful, wonderful comments. So as we go through, I'm going to ask if you do have a question, type the word question in all caps. So I have a better chance of uh, seeing it. Or you can even use the at symbol, symbol the, um, you know, the A with a circle around it, the at symbol. And the Frugal Crafter, my name should pop up. And if you click on that, then when you type your comment, I'll see a nice orange bar and that will catch my eye a little easier. Um, so I'm just going to look real quick, see if I see any questions right off the top. But otherwise, um, let's just jump in. Now, this will be somewhat in order, but uh, not perfectly. I guess I'll start off with this one. I can't remember how many days this was in, but it was the prompt perform. And uh, there's also a tutorial of this um, on in Critique Club and a time lapse in uh, um, on YouTube if you want to check it out. But uh, basically, I saw playing guitar and he just looks so happy um and I thought oh that'd be fun to to be out on a boardwalk and hearing somebody perform and so I did that with um a mixture of watercolor crayons and my M. Graham watercolors and it's a cerulean blue in the sky that's giving it that really nice 
um, texture. So that's a probably a granulating color that you already have in one of your palettes. So, you know, I know we get all excited about all this new stuff and the super granulating colors are like the, the most exciting watercolor thing right now. But if you look through your colors, you swatch them out, you're going to find that you have some that granulate and just use those more if you want to get that effect without investing in more colors, because you can always mix, you can mix, um, you know, the cerulean with some yellow ochre, get some like granulating greens. You can, um, really play with with the colors that you have and get that texture that you might want all right so i'll set that one aside and we will focus on our sketchbooks and i think i'll start off with a small one because um i use that one quite a bit so the first day was the day where i was um did i not oh i didn't do it on the first page the first day the prompt was train and i'm actually gonna pull my camera down a little bit closer. So I apologize for any sort of uh, seasickness. There we go. Um, so the first prompt was train and I, it was 930 at night. I was like, I can't believe I'm going to start this challenge. I'm already so tired, but I was, uh, my sneakers were on the floor and there was a jump rope in the corner of the room and I grabbed them both and just plopped them onto a step ladder that was next to my desk. And I just sketched it and I'm like, okay, I can do this. So that was day one. Uh, day two is passion. So I'm like, well, I'm passionate about art. So I am going to paint my art supplies. And there's a time lapse of this one on my YouTube channel, if you want to check that out. And then um, the third day was time. And as you can see, I don't do my my uh, sketchbooks in any particular order. I just kind of jump around. Deborah's asking, is it only once a year? World Watercolor Month is every July. However, Doodle Wash, the outfit that runs it, um, does a prompt list every month. So you could do you could do this. They have prompts every day for every month. So you can do that at any time. But July is kind of fun because a lot of people, well, more people participate then. So you, it's kind of. Um, it's kind of exciting to have other people doing it too. You feel like you're kind of part of something. And I've had some requests to do a tutorial on this or something like it. I really enjoyed using granulating watercolors in the shadow here. I really wanted the shadow to kind of almost be the focal point of this piece. So the thing with uh, World Watercolor Month or any daily challenge is that you have a new chance every single day to try something different. And so it doesn't become as precious. And if you want to try out a different technique, you can do it because you if even if it's not good, you've got a whole other chance tomorrow to, you know, do a better job. So you're not competing against other people that are doing this. You're competing against how you were yesterday, basically, and you're growing your skills. So um, so I think it's just such a uh, such a fun thing to do. Um, Anastasia asks, have you tried the Etcher Cold Press sketchbook? Is it worth a try or would one? better spend the same amount of money on a block of Arches cold press. I have not used the Etcher, any of the Etcher's paper, so I don't know, but I have one of their bags and it's very high quality, I, but I haven't used a sketchbook. I think I've heard good things about it though, um, but Arches, Arches paper is one of my favorites. So um, yeah, this one right here, the uh, theme was patriotic and we have these buntings that I hang on my front porch every year. So I just snapped a photo of it and I painted that. And I just used, um, I think I just used three colors. I used uh, like a blue, I used, these are from Regina's watercolors here. And I used, I think it was maybe called rose and blueberry. And I, then I think I maybe mixed some brown and with the blueberry, or maybe I used storm. I don't remember, but it was a limited palette. And uh, I like the way it turned out. Um, and then honestly, I don't remember uh, what the um, bronze, maybe, I don't know. I don't remember what the prompt was for that one, but I sketched my little mini um, Windsor & Newton vintage uh, tin. It's vintage. I got it new in the 90s, but it's still, I guess that's con considered vintage. But I love that little palette. It came with such a useful assortment of colors. And I've just refilled them as I've um, as I've used them up. They have Windsor Yellow, Thalo Green, which might be called Windsor Green. That might be their proprietary name. It's got uh, Ultramarine, Permanent Rose, um, Cadmium Red, Burnt Sienna, Intense Blue or Windsor Blue. It's whatever their Thalo Blue is. And then Yellow Ochre. And uh, then I put like an itty bitty uh, prism color white nub in there and it comes with the useless travel brush. So I always have to use other brushes too. Uh, so I was using my my uh, new set of brushes that I have coming out with Craft Ammo. And I just found out yesterday that my that they've got the packaging done and everything and my set is coming to me right now. So that must mean they're going to be getting ready to list it in the next week or two. So I'm very excited about that. 
Uh, let me see. Clark Fine Art says, ooh, I love that pocket watch. Just realized you were live. Yay. Company in the studio now. Oh, awesome. That's Angela Clark. She's a fellow Mainer. We've got a few Mainers in the uh, in the chat today I've seen. Okay. Deborah asks, are Regina's watercolors worth the price? They look so enticing. Well, I have a full review on them. I would recommend watching that before you purchase um, because it has any pros and cons that you might want to consider. I think they're high quality. They're very sticky. So if you live in a really humid area, you might not want to get their sets that have the shallow pans. You might want to just pick out some of the half pans and put them in a palette that you already have because what I found, because in Maine, it's kind of humid in the summer, um, they would kind of stick to my brush sometimes, but the quality wise is really nice. Um, Jinx is asking, do you know if your brushes will be affordable? Um, they are going to be the set of six, I believe will be around $50, I believe 50 to 60. I said, I wanted to keep it in the $50 price range, but I do have some big brushes in there. So that's kind of contributing to the cost, but you know what, if they're not in your budget, don't, don't stress yourself out to buying them. I have other affordable brushes I've recommended in the past and I still stand by any brush I've ever recommended. So don't feel like you have to get my custom set. Um, you know, to prove anything, get them if they're useful to you and, and you're going to enjoy them. I, I did put a lot of work into making sure the uh, selection was really useful, but if you've already got brushes you're happy with, please do not feel like you need to, you need to go buy them. Um, all right. Okay. I think I'm caught up. So the next prompt was home. And um, I guess I must've been in a mood because I'm like, Hmm, should I paint the sink full of dirty dishes or should I paint the laundry over there? I was just, I was, the house was, it was a mess and I was frustrated and there were dust bunnies everywhere. And so, um, so I painted a basket of laundry. This is an actual basket of laundry <laughs> in my home. And I just plunked it down and I painted it. And that was much more satisfying than actually washing the laundry. And that's not even my basket of laundry. That's one of my daughters. So they do their own laundry now so and we told the kids when you go to college you're doing your laundry there <laughs> and do not bring you to well, I could bring it home on vacation I guess but don't don't come home every weekend with laundry do your laundry at school <laughs> all right let's see we've got um this one right here I can't remember the prompt I think it was fast actually and my dog looks like a total dork here but um because I and and you people had the best tips after I had done this um I was trying to get a photo of my dog because I take her down to the ball field where I can enclose it because she if she gets loose she is just gone until she feels like coming back she's so fast I can't catch her so if she runs off it's just like well I gotta wait till she comes home um so I take her down to run every day and um and so I was trying to get pictures of her running and I just couldn't get any and then people were like you take a video and then he pauses the video I'm like that's brilliant I didn't even think of that um, so anyways, one of the pictures I got was this goofy one and I just, uh, drew that and I always call it zoomies when she goes to run cause she zooms around and I'll say, I'll say, Penny, you want to go zoomy? And then she gets all waggy and, uh, we go down to the ball field and she, and she zooms around. And then I figure if she gets, uh, if she gets loose after a zoomy session, she's not going to go too far cause she'll be tired. Oh, somebody asked if my brushes are natural hair. They are not. Um, I am a, um, I have a vegan diet, as you know. Um, I use Arches watercolor paper, which has um, gelatin sizing. I'm not like my lifestyle isn't vegan. I have I have old brushes that are natural fur. I don't throw them away because I no longer buy um, so, um, natural fur brushes. But I'll just show you these brushes real quick so you can see. Um, they have the, they're going to be this color. the uh, The handles are going to be this color. They're going to have uh, rose gold, feral, um, and gold writing. And let's see, is there? Yes, is one more. I just have to make sure I don't get, there was a couple I had to, I had to have changed because I didn't care for how they performed with their filaments. So we've got a nice flat wash with a uh, nice long bristles here, golden tacklon. We've got a nice, a sharp round. This is, um, I would say roughly American number mm, between an eight and a 10, depending on, you know, some of the brushes fluctuate in size. This is a half inch dagger, which is wonderful for doing florals. And also for doing random foliage and stuff, so you're not getting every brush stroke looking the same. We've got a nice cat's tongue brush. Now these are um, these are all golden ta golden tacklon. Our liner is also a golden tacklon. It's got uh, the first one I did was a little too long and it was too floppy, so I had to have them come back with shorter bristles. And um, then we've got a couple really absorbent brushes. We've got about a number sixteen. Uh, faux squirrel and then we've got a cat's tongue faux squirrel and this is this is probably going to be your most powerhouse brush here it comes to such a sharp point when it's wet and it carries a lot of paint too so you can do washes to fine details but um so they these there are some pretty big brushes here and that's why it's going to be in the 50 to 60 dollar range um 
I wanted to get the price as low as I could, but the quality as high as I could and as useful as possible. So I know it's it's easy to get small brushes pretty cheaply. So I just didn't want to replicate stuff that you'd find in every other set you probably already have bought. Um, and stuff, if you needed like a smaller brush, you can buy that for a few dollars at a at an art store or craft store. So I wanted to get kind of the most bang for your buck. But if it's not in your budget and or you don't have the need for them, please don't don't feel like you need to add more brushes to your stash. Get them if they're if they're useful to you. But anyway, uh, oh, I see a question. Uh, oh, the brushes will come through Craft Am Ammo. They will be worldwide, available worldwide, um, and they'll do all the shipping. And I think there was another question. Oh, uh, Lily CK asks, where do you get the prompts for World Watercolor Month? If you go to, if you just Google World Watercolor Month, uh, it'll take you to doodlewash.com. And that's where they do the prompts for, they actually have prompts for every single month. And you can either go to their website or you can follow them on social media. And uh, it's just wherever you want to find them, basically. It's pretty popular and pretty easy to find. Okay, this next one here, I actually have a live stream real-time tutorial of the, actually, did I live stream it? It's a real-time tutorial anyway of this one on my YouTube channel. This was a lot of fun, um, a refreshing drink. And I, I think the, the prompt was welcome. Um, and like when people come over, I like to offer them a, bev a beverage. So I thought, oh, a refreshing glass of lemonade or something fruity would be good in the summer. Um, this prompt was center, I think. And when I feel totally scattered and stressed out and I want to center myself, then I like to go get my kayak and just have a paddle. And so this is a photo at, from a photo I took last summer. I was just kind of, uh, out in the middle of the pond and I had my phone. So I was taking some pictures of the scenery and I just took a picture of my feet at the end of the kayak. Um, Ashwini G asks, Lindsay, have you posted the tutorial for the watch? Is it possible to have one? I have not, but like I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, if there's any tutorials you really wanna see, please let me know in the comments. So after the video is done, you can leave a comment under the replay and say, I love a tutorial of the watch. I'd love a tutorial of this or that. Or if somebody else says, I'd love a tutorial of the watch, you can comment under that. Me too, or absolutely, or, you know, anything like that. Uh, just so I know what has the most interest. I'm just going to look back, see if I missed any questions. Um, I think, okay, I don't think I missed any. And if I did, you can always repost. Um, I'm not perfect. <laughs> I never claim to be. Uh, okay, so the next one, we have um, this one is a cup of coffee. Oh, strong. The prompt was strong. And so I drew a cup of coffee. And I was like, oh, I was so frustrated with this. And I had just got my new glasses. And so when I was looking at it, I, I'd look at it from a different angle. And the, the circle would look all wonky because I had to get bifocals, guys. Um, so... <laughs> It's so different than using regular single focus or single vision lenses. And so I look at it at a different, at a different angle and it looks like the circle is an oval. And so I was so frustrated with this. And then I was like, this looks like junk. It doesn't even, uh, but I got to post it because I don't have time to do anything else. And people were thinking it was a photo. And I'm like, are you kidding? Don't you see all those flaws? But that made me feel good that people thought it was actually a photo. Um, but that was for the prompt strong. And this here was for the prompt. I don't know if it was wave. It might've been wave. And I was using some watercolors that I was, I was doing a review and I was not liking these watercolors at all. And I was about to just kind of give a really bad review. And then I was like, well, I got to give it a one more chance because maybe I'm not giving it a fair shot. So I'm really going to do my best use these paints. I'll use it for one of my prompts, even though I'd really have loved to do my wave this, this prompt in like M Graham or some other, you know, one of my favorite watercolors. Um, but I'm like, no, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a fair shot. Something I'm really interested in painting. I'm going to use these paints. I still don't like them, but, uh, but I, I thought this, this, uh, sketch came out a little bit better. Um, so, you know, you can, you can create something with paints that are not the best. <laughs> it didn't change my mind on the review though. <laughs> Uh, this one was for pride. So I decided to do a rainbow bracelet inspired by the necklace that I made a few years ago that I always get lots of com uh, compliments on. People will come right up to me and start talking to me and say they like the necklace and stuff. And, and I think that that perfectly describes uh, and signifies pride and unity because like just a, a piece of jewelry can make people feel comfortable to come up and talk to you. And um, it's a conversation starter. And I just thought that was a wonderful representation of that word. And and that's why I did a I did a bracelet of it because those probably has like 200 beads on it. I wasn't going to draw the whole thing because I was, uh, again, crunched for time. Most of these were done like late at night unless I was doing them on vacation. Um, 
Okay, so in this one, sadly, I accidentally spattered it. Um, I didn't even know how I managed to do that, but it was when I was painting that. I ended up spattering some paint on this one. But the um, the prompt, I think, was focus, maybe? And I was on vacation. I was at camp. And um, so the scene across the pond is this bluff here, which we actually hiked later on in the week. And they got the water in front of it. And I just like the uh, the trees kind of kind of growing up, making a frame. And then, of course, the framing effect of the glasses and then having everything fuzzy in the background, I thought was just kind of a fun take on that prompt. So, um, yeah, I, I, I like how that came out. I'm really bummed that I spattered water, but I didn't dare to try to lift it up because I used ultramarine blue in the background and that's a, a sedimentary color and it would have lifted up really, really quickly. So I don't didn't want to wreck it. Uh, I got a question from Ashwini G. Where should we put the request for demo videos? In the video after the live streaming is done because right now commenting is not allowed, I guess. Yes, as soon as the this live stream is over, the replay will appear on YouTube and just leave a regular old YouTube comment. And that, that way I'll be able to see it because uh, I won't be able to like scan through the live stream to tally up votes. Um, uh, it'll be much easier if it's under the, under the video. And then this one... Um, I don't remember. Drift, I think. Drift might have been the prompt for that one. And I just wanted to do like a little paper airplane. And I like the idea of like, and I do this a lot with Inktober when I'm doing marker work. I love having a frame or having like a shape that um, kind of uh, centers the object or kind of gives it a place to be. But I love having a part of it kind of coming out, like breaking that fourth wall and letting part of the image come out of a of a shape. Um and then I also let the shadow come out of the, the shape too. And I thought that was a really effective technique. And I like the way that came out. And then um, this here, this was, I don't remember. What was this prompt? Shoot. I should actually, I should have opened my Instagram uh, account because I have the prompts written. I'm at Lindsay Wyrick on Instagram. And I do have what each day, I have them in order, obviously, because I posted them as I did them. Um, but anyways, I took my Neocolor 1 crayons and I just kind of took the kind of muted primaries and I put them out in rainbow order and I painted them and I love how that came out and I used the Derwent pastel watercolors but I mixed them with Cotman watercolors and they worked so well together and I'm generally not a huge fan of the modern Cotman watercolors but they they just worked really well with the viscosity of the pastel Derwent watercolors so a little tip there if you have those two products try using them together because they're a lot of fun I think the ink tents uh, would also work really well with the pastels but they might be a little bit too bold where the cotton is a little bit less bold. And this is uh, this one was for record, the, the prompt record. I It was, again, end of the day. I didn't really want to do it, but it was two days before the challenge was done, and I'm like, I've got to do something. And so I just did one of those little 45 plastic pieces that you pop in. And, uh, yeah, it was easy peasy, and I got the prompt done for the day. Uh, so obviously these aren't totally in order because I jumped between a couple sketchbooks. This one right here, I actually found some old Strathmore postcards. And um, this is the old Strathmore Imperial watercolor paper. I don't think they make it anymore. And I don't know if it's cotton or if it was cellulose or what. But anyway, um, I found this foam roller and I just randomly rolled it over the paper with different colors. And then I used the watercolors and some colored pencils and a gel pen to add the highlights. So I just said I had a fun time with that. I think I'll probably mail this off as a birthday card or maybe, I don't know, maybe put it on a, a five by seven or maybe I'll just send a postcard. I don't know. I think it's fun to send postcards. So um, I thought that would be just kind of something fun to do. Uh, I have a few, I have a few vacation. These are old Orchard Beach um, illustrations because I just started this sketchbook um, this summer when I went to Old Orchard Beach and I think I showed these already but let's do a quick little flip through there let's supposed to go that way but yeah I had a lot of fun painting out there and there we go so this was for the prompt um cheer it was cheer so I thought oh cheers and then I thought well let's get fun with this and make it like all splashy and messy and stuff so kind of like a wild champagne um this right here was bronze I believe and I really love how this one came out I feel like I got a really good effect with the um with the kind of filaments in there I used the uh Boku Undo shadow colors and they're a watercolor that's mixed with um with sumi e sumi ink black sumi ink and so it actually very delicately granulates and they're all really dark black colors so you would want to add 
um, you'd want to have other things to mix with them because they're just really dark on their own. But, um, but I really enjoyed that. So this was funny because I sketched this out and I put the background in and then my phone rang and it was my eye doctor's office that my new glasses were ready. So I went to pick them up. And when I came back, I finished the drawing part of it. And it was so, um, it was so weird because I kept looking at it and it kept, things kept moving and like morphing. <laughs> so it was very, um, it was very interesting. And the filaments in the center, I actually did masking fluid. And then I'm not someone who uses masking fluid very often because I think it, a lot of times is kind of, um, uh, oh, the Karen Dosh prompt. That was group. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Terry Lynn. I appreciate that. Um, or I couldn't remember what the crayons were. It was group. Um, so I used masking fluid to do the filaments in there because I wanted them to glow. But then after I took the fluid off, I didn't like it because it just so choppy and chunky. But um, I actually kind of like how it did leave a lot of light in there. And um, and yeah, there, that's kind of how I did that. I did use some colored pencils to get that patina on the... Um, on the light bulb holder, but I would, this, this is probably my favorite world watercolor month one. Uh, you guys will have to let me know what your favorite is when we get to the end, but that's the one I enjoyed the most. Um, so these next few will be from my vacation and, um, I was really ready for a vacation. We rent a camp. We actually rented a different camp on a little pond this year, same pond, different camp. And, um, and it was kind of stressful to get out there. Plus I was stressed out cause my dad was in the hospital. He had broken his hip. Um, there's nothing I could do. So I was kind of just kind of waiting on from like when, when she would come to visit and all that stuff. So it was kind of like at the, the, uh, the climax of my stress. And I, we got to camp and I'm like, and I, and then I was thinking, oh my word, I hope they have a corkscrew. <laughs> they just want to open this bottle of wine and, and sit out by the water and have a glass of wine. And, um, not that I'm advocating drinking, you know, drink responsible. You, you do you, you're, if you're an adult, you know, everybody's got to make their own choices in life. Anyway, I was ready for a glass of wine and um, they had this corkscrew and I'm like, that is so cool looking. It's very old fashioned. And so as I sipped my wine, I painted this, uh, this corkscrew out on the deck. And I saw the loons, a set of three loons came, came by as I was doing that. So it was a nice relaxing day or a nice relaxing uh, reprieve from the stress I'd been feeling. And I used Potter's Pink. I'd added Potter's Pink to my palette this summer. My, my portable painter palette now has Potter's Pink. Say that five times fast. Um, and I love how it's, it's so good for like, um, moody skies. It's so good for adding shadows. It's got a beautiful texture. It's not overpowering. And this is the My Mary Blue Potter's Pink. And I've tried a couple brands. Um, actually, maybe I've only tried one other brand. I don't know, but this one was a lot better than the Renaissance Potter's Pink I tried in the past. And I just like the tone of it. I love the granulation of it. It's not very expensive. I got it from either Blick or Jerry's. And I think it was around... I don't know, between 10 and $13 for a pretty good size tube, 12 mLs maybe. And a little goes a long way. So, and it rewets pretty easy, which I appreciate. A little bit of gel pen in there too, but I liked how that came out. I think I sketched, oh, I sketched it with an ink tense pencil because I'm like, I did not have a pencil in my bag. I'm like, are you kidding me? Then I realized I had one in my Art Nomad palette that was like part of that kit. But um, so I sketched it with a like a gray ink tense pencil, which was a little more overpowering than I thought it was going to be. But, um, but I like the way it came out anyway. Um, pretty happy with that. And this is one of our loons. So the loons kept coming by. I never saw any ducks, but there were lots of loons. And actually, at one point, I was laying out on a float, and there was nobody else on the pond. It's a very quiet pond. And um, and a loon came so close to me. It was, and I didn't notice it till it was on. Until it was going away. And my husband and kids were playing Monopoly back at the camp, and they looked out and they actually saw the loon like really close to me. But um, but sadly, I didn't see it till it was kind of going away, which is probably good. I probably would have freaked out and scared it away. But um, but uh, oh, I love loons. They're so big. And actually, they're kind of um, they're kind of klutzy and gommy if you ever see them on land. But they're big. They're bigger than you would expect. So this was one where they do the thing where they kind of like paddle and they flap their wings and they kind of just almost go horizontal out of the water. And I think it was kind of cool. I, I feel like this is a little bit, I don't know, awkward looking. But um, yeah. That's how it is sometimes. Uh, Angela says, I've been stalking loons all summer with no close-ups. They are beautiful. Yeah, I can't get a good picture of them either. It's it's tough. They're too, they don't come close enough for that. Unless I guess you have a really nice, nice camera where you can zoom really far in. Um, this was, uh, this is actually pretty early in the morning. I woke up very early on vacation, like five, between five and six. And I would get up, have my coffee, 
walk the dog around a bit. And then they had this little uh, lamppost out front of the camp and the light was really strong and the, the prompt was resist. And I thought the way the light was hitting these flowers, it, they were, it was like bright white where the light was hitting the flowers. And I thought, what if I use, I always have a hunk of wax in my travel bag. And so I took that wax and I thought I'm going to do a wax resist. And so I sketched out the little lamppost and the flower pot and the flag. And then I did uh, wax resist. So I just drew on the stripes and some dots for the stars and the highlights in the glass and the highlights on the plant and the um, lamppost. And then I just painted over it with pretty much with abandon because I knew those whites would, would stay because they were wax. And then while I was waiting for certain areas to dry, I went over here and just did a, a like a quick study of just the lamp part. And um, it was fun. I just felt like, um, I don't know, I just felt like having a very free paint session and not really worrying about how, um, you know, how it was going to come out. When, you do, when you're painting every day, there's less worrying about how everything comes out. I don't know why I have a hard time keeping this thing straight on the camera. All right. So this was, um, shoot, what was this one? It wasn't group. It was, uh, it was another one, the crowd. It was a crowd, I think was the, uh, was the prompt. And I'd gone for a walk with the dog a couple of days earlier and there were a couple of clusters of birch trees that I really liked. So I took some photos. It was by this farm. And actually there were some vintage cars at the farm too. So, um, I took a couple pictures of those as well, but I love birch trees. And so I thought this would be a really fun, um, a really fun sketch to do. And I like that so much, although I wasn't that thrilled with the way my birch trees were coming out over here. So I decided I would just do a birch tree and try to isolate it and, and capture the essence of what I thought made it look kind of special. And then I also, um, did some ferns. I like how the ferns came out very, um, uh, kind of very expressive, but I like how it kind of gave me a little contrast against the trunk of the tree. Here you can see the potter's pink giving me that beautiful granulating texture in there that I wanted. Um, so yeah, I was pretty happy with the with these two sketches for the uh, the prompt crowd, and uh, gave me another chance to paint a birch tree. I also put Mars black in my palette, and I generally don't have black in a palette, but because it is such a beautiful texture and granulating texture, and this would be the um, the Turner's Mars Black, which is cooler in temperature than other Mars Blacks and granulates really aggressively and is cheap. I think I paid like $5 for a 15 ml tube of that. So I highly recommend if you're looking for some cheap granulating colors, Turner watercolors available through Jerry's Artorama. Get them at Jerry's because on Amazon, they're really overpriced. Um, but even though they're sold, they're both sold by Jerry's either way, but Jerry's sells them much cheaper on their website. They're Ultramarine Blue Deep. They're uh, Mars Black, they're Cobalt Violet, um, and they have a couple other, like a Mars Violet and a Mars Brown, all beautiful granulating colors, and they're all around 5 or $6 a tube when they go on sale, so definitely worth keeping an eye out if you want some of those colors. And, oh, this was um, that horrible pain I was telling you about. <laughs> I was just doing some doodles with it, and you can even see how, like, I talk about how I, I like granulation, but this is just kind of like silt like a very silty effect in that paint that was the um i'll just warn you so that you don't well i don't know i don't want to be speaking bad about paint brands but um it's the um it's the zen student grade paint it's the um either the Saran, the uh allegro was a set that i had but there's another one there's another couple there's that set they look like the semi art paints and the artistro paints i think they're probably all the same very uh very grainy very kind of chalky and opaque they look vibrant at first glance but then as you start painting out with them they just are um just kind of dull and uh frustrating um, I don't remember what the prompt was. I don't know. Maybe there wasn't a prompt for this one. I don't remember if there was a prompt or not. But anyway, it, this is a close up of a detail of the bluff that I ended up, we ended up hiking later on. And then I love these little rocks here because I got some beautiful colors and texture in them. Um, I don't know if I like this piece overall, but it was, um, you know, the, uh, I like these rocks anyway. Sometimes you, you at least can find something in a painting that you like. Uh, Lily CK asks, what does Lindsay mean by granulating color? I've heard this a lot, but don't know what it means. Granulating color basically means that the color uh, kind of splits and separates and gives you a beautiful texture. Like this right here, I use Potter's Pink in the background. And can you see that texture there? I actually have a video. Um, it's on making your own granulating palette and the blog post that accompanies it 
is nice because it has more of the recipes written out. I can show you my uh, some granulating swatches just to give you an idea. I'm just going to walk across the room here and uh, grab them because they're actually handy. So what I did actually was I went through my um, the colors I already had, the paints I already had in my stash, and I swatched a bunch out that I thought would granulate, and I chose the ones that have the most texture. So that one shows it really well. That's uh, Renaissance number 26 Ultramarine Violet. That's a really aggressively granula granulating color. Uh, Renaissance paints are really affordable. Um, some colors are better than others, though. Uh, I would definitely recommend the Ultramarine Violet. Um, let's see. Like this lavender. You might have lavender in some palettes. That was a Paul Rubens lavender, very granulating. Uh, Schmincke's Cobalt Blue Deep. Um, Cerulean's another granulating. Cobalt Turquoise. You know, Cobalt Teal. Any of your, most of your cobalt colors will granulate. Uh, so anyways, that paints that give you that kind of texture. And so you probably have some in your stash already. It's just there. Um, like actually Turner Mars Violet looks a lot like Potter's Pink. Um, that was a Renaissance Potter's Pink, but it has a lot of binder issues. You can see how shiny that is. So I don't recommend that color from Renaissance, but um, I like their Bordeaux, their Cadmium Bordeaux. That has a beautiful granulating uh, reddish brown color, kind of bloody looking almost. Um, so anyway, on that blog post, I do go in with specific brands that I used and what I did, what I recommend and what I don't recommend, just in case you're, um, just in case you are looking for some. And then this, these paints here were shared with me by my friend Rosie. I'm just going to put my camera back up a little bit. Uh, she has the full section, the full selection of Schmincke granulating. There we go. And so she made uh, pans of it for me. And that's what all these are, the Schmincke colors. So they can get kind of repetitive after a while. So you might want to pick and choose some unique things that are different than what you already have in your palette, but they've got some really interesting options. And this right here is Gothite Brown from Daniel Smith. And it's, it's PY42, I believe. It's the same pigment as yellow ochre. Um, yeah, that's kind of a nice, uh, a nice color too, if you want some of that texture. But the My Mary Blue Potter's Pink, I'm finding to be a very good color to add into your selection. Uh, oh, Confident? Oh, the, the prompt was confident. Thank you <laughs> so much. I said the prompt was confident. I was confident I was going to climb that maybe. Or I think it was that on my anniversary, the one that I, the one I posted, posted that day. Um, this one right here, the prompt was Ceremony. And I just read Memories of a Geisha and I brought that book with me. I picked it up at a used book sale and the, the cover was pretty battered. And so I figured, well, if the cover's battered, then it must be a pretty good book. <laughs> so I bought it. Actually, there were two copies and I bought the copy that was a little bit more dis uh, less distressed. Um, and I really enjoyed the book. And uh, so I did that little tea ceremony. This one right here was to the prompt breathe. And so it's a woman swimming. And I was very frustrated with this picture as I was doing it. This prompt was also last year. There was the prompt breathe. And I found it frustrating last year as well. And this year I did uh, somebody swimming. And um, I, I like the concept of this year's better. And it's all right. Um, but it was kind of, it was kind of frustrating. <laughs> and I will have a full length tutorial for this tomorrow at noon. I am premiering it. So I'll be hanging out live in chat. Um, but this tutorial will be up tomorrow for anybody to enjoy. And also it will be, uh, the replay will be available. So you can catch it live and hang out with me and other friends in the chat or just watch a replay whenever it's convenient. But this was a lot of fun. Um, the prompt was rest. And I just thought like a, you know, a cat napping in a bed would be really cute. And so that's what we did. Watercolor with some colored pencil highlights. And it was, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was about, I think it's about an hour. So um, that's the real time, but an hour real time. But you will probably have to let passages dry, especially if you want to get any granulating texture. You'll want to let, um, you want to let things air dry. If you're going to use granulating paints and you really want to get that granulating texture, don't use a hair dryer or a heat tool. You want to paint it and then like let it, let it sit in a really wet wash because you need the pigment to settle out um, of the water. And so if it's puddly and your, your paper has some texture to it, you're going to get more of an effect because that paint's going to sell out and it's going to, um, split in between the little divots of your paper. And that's where you're going to get that really pretty texture. And, oh, I see a question. What black 
what black sketchbooks do you recommend? Thank you. Um, the only black sketchbook I have is one Rosie made me. I don't know if there's any, well, it's probably mixed media. Arteza has a mixed media black sketchbook, um, but it's very smooth. Um, I guess I'm not, I'm not really, I don't use black sketchbooks very much, so I'm not a good one to, I don't have a recommendation really. Um, this one right here was the last one of the month. So this was Sunday. This was um, gold. And so I thought it'd be fun to do a trophy, like um, like an athletic trophy, but let's make it an artist instead of an athlete. And um, so I put uh, WWM MVP. So World Watercolor Month, Most Valuable Painter or Most Valuable, well, you know, like a play on Most Valuable Player. So Most Valuable Painter. Does anybody know sports? <laughs> So uh, I thought that would be kind of fun. And I would dedicate this painting to all of the participants in World Watercolor Month because it does feel a bit like we've completed a marathon by the time it's done. And I used tons of colors on this. I, I sketched out the the guy. I actually looked at a trophy of a of a, like a track runner. And then I added the uh, I added like, you know, a smock and a beret and pants and a a um uh, palette and some brushes, even though that's not a watercolor palette, but I wanted it to be like, kind of have that visual impact. And I painted this in like really bright colors. So I did yellow and, uh, like cobalt teal and, um, Quinn red. And I let the colors all bleed together. And then I let that dry. And I went over with a mix of, um, of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and did the shadows. This here I did with a Mars black to give it just a natural texture and added a little bit of other colors to it and then shaded with the mix of ultramarine blue and um, and brown and kind of bring brought the shadow over and then used some Dr. P.H. Martin's bleed proof white gouache for highlighting. And that was fun. I liked how that came out. Oh, I did do a little bit of, um, I don't know if you can see it, it doesn't really show up, but I did use a little bit of Paul Rubens metallic watercolor in bronze and gold just to add little uh, splips and splops here and there for a little bit of a golden feeling as well. But, uh, but there, there you have it. That's World Watercolor Month. Um, I'm going to check out the chat and see what we have for questions. Let me see if I can find something interesting to put, to open my thing to. Let's go to my, I want to go to my favorite one. I'll put that one there because that's my favorite. I think that's my favorite spread out of the month. Oh my word. Everything's backwards when you're streaming and you're looking at your screen. Everything is backwards. It's very disconcerting. Okay. So if you have questions, you can go ahead and type them in the chat. I'm going to start current and work back. And, um... Joe Amand asks, what's a light fast alternative to rose matter? I would try any of your quinacridone reds or quinacridone pinks. You'll be able to find something that will um, that will hit the spot there. Let's see. Uh, Deborah Goodwin asks, what's your favorite blue and by who? Ooh, I think I'm going to have to go with Ultramarine Blue Deep by Turner, which is uh, which is unusual because that is a really affordable paint line but man that ultramarine blue deep i i don't think i think you'd be able, you'd have a hard time to find one better and you definitely aren't going to find anything better for the price but i really like that blue i use it i use ultramarine blue i think in almost every painting it's the one that i have to refill in my well the most often um definitely my most used color there's a lot of good ultramarine blues though so um so, you know, yeah, you can definitely find a good one. I actually just tried um, getting ready to review the Shinhan PWC Extra Fine Watercolors, and they have a really nice ultramarine blue deep in their, um, in their range as well. If anybody else has a, has a recommendation of a black sketchbook that you want to leave for Jessica Rodriguez, Rodriguez, Rodriguez sorry, uh, please let her know in the chat because I don't really have a good recommendation. Sorry for the dead air. I'm just kind of reading. I can't read and talk at the same time. Um, oh, and Joe asked previously, is Rose Matter genuine light fast? If so, what brand would you recommend? If not, what's a good alternative? Well, most of your traditional colors like Rose Matter, things that are actually made from plants, generally those are more fugitive colors because they're just not, um, they're just not that stable. But synthetic alternatives, any quinacridones are going to give you a pretty stable measure of light fastness. And um, that's why a lot of times the the perm either permanent version or hues, a lot of these colors are actually better than their originals if it's a, a plant-based um, organic pigment. 
I'm not, I'm not a chemist or anything, but um, that's just what I've, what I've uh, learned over the years. Uh, uh, Angela Clark Fine Art says, hopefully if Jerry's ever came to Maine, they'd pick a city uh, and it would be Bangor. Then Lindsay, we could do a shopping spree. Oh, that would be dangerous. I don't know if I could live in the same area as a Jerry's Artorama. I think I would be broke. <laughs> All right, I think I have caught up with those questions and I will go, I'll go back to the end and see if anybody else has added more questions. And if you have a question, go ahead and pop it in there and I will answer it. Oh, Jinx recommends Stonehenge Black. I do like that watercolor paper. I don't know if they have a sketchbook of it, but you could definitely make your own. Uh, Gwen was asking about DS duochrome interference watercolors. Yep, though if they're duo du duochrome, they shift from one to the other, then they would be interference. Um, Noreen says, Schminka super granulating are super expensive and out of my budget. So which brand would you recommend for granulating watercolors that are a little budget friendly? Noreen, the first thing I would do is pull out all of your paints. I'm not kidding you. Pull them all out onto your table and then um, look for any colors that have cobalt in the name. And look for um, like your ultramarine blue, uh, the lot of cerulean. Um, you can try your blacks and try the browns that you have and swatch them out in really wet washes and let them dry. Make sure you label them so you know what you have. And then um, I would go through and I would select all those colors that give you some good texture in a wet wash like that. And then I would put them in a palette and make your own super granulating set. Um, like I mentioned, Turner has quite a few good granulating colors and they're very budget friendly, especially if you wait for a sale at Jerry's Artorama. Um, they had, uh, I haven't tried them all. I bought a few. Uh, I'm trying to see that. I did have a swatch. It was just their colors that I recently bought. Um, oh, I do. It's right here. Um, so there's their Mars Black, Turner's Mars Black. I paid about $5. Things have gone up a little bit, and that was on sale. Then there was um, Cobalt Green. That was a little bit more, but I'm thinking it was only like six or seven. Cobalt Teal. Uh, that one I wasn't, it granulates, but didn't really love that color. But look at the Ultramarine Blue Deep. See, that's got a beautiful texture and you can mix that with stuff. Mar anything with Mars in the title, Mars Brown, Mars Violet, um, Mars colors granulate a lot. Um, like that's Mars Black. So look for the word Mars, Cobalt. Those are going to be good indicators that your colors will granulate. Cobalt Violet, Mars Violet. Um, that one didn't really granulate. That was Benz and Adid Brown. But uh, so... It's going to be generally your earth tones, any color that's really easy to lift. Those have potential for being granulators. And the Turner Ultramarine Blue Deep, Mars Black, absolutely for sure. I like those two violets if you think you would use them. Um, anything with Mars in the title is going, to, is going to work good. Mars Brown's a great one. I already had Mars Brown from a couple different brands, so I didn't buy a Turner Mars Brown, but that would be a good option. Um... I think I'd start there. Uh, Renaissance has some good colors too, and they're available at the A Little Creative on Etsy. But you know what? Go to my blog post. Just go to my blog and search um, uh, granulation palette or granulating palette, and that post will come up. And I have specific brands and the colors that I used. So that way you can shop around and see what's going to be um, best for your budget. Because you know, as you're shopping in different places, if you have to split up your order, it might be better just to buy a brand that one store carries versus going to another if, you know, you're going to have to pay shipping twice, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and you might be able to get like the Shaminga Super Granulating. You might be able to buy like half pans on eBay or Etsy or something where someone has bought the big tubes and they're splitting it up because they don't need that much. So that's always an option. So you can test it out before you buy a, like a whole tube and then buy a, buy a tube of it if you really like it maybe. I don't know how long the fad of the really granulating colors is going to be. Um, I guess it will, be de it will depend on how much it gets used. If it gets overused and then it will get kind of dated, I think. But it's always something you can mix in, especially. And the other reason why I would say go with um, a color that granulates that's a single pigment versus um, one of the, the schminkas, which is oftentimes a mixed pigment, is that those single pigment colors can always be mixed with other colors, even if the granulating fad goes away. 
you can still use them with other things. You can, um, they're just a little more versatile, I think. But if you're not sure what you should be mixing, you know, then the Schmincke colors do, you know, they do make sense. Another good option would be to go with a Daniel Smith stick. So I don't have any right off hand, but the, um, well, maybe in the, let me see what this palette is. I might have a few. Uh, okay, so you can kind of see these little nuggets here. Those are Daniel Smith sticks that I've cut down. Um, serpentine, um, sodalite, and cobalt teal. That's actually two, but I do have a stick of that. They're much cheaper than their than the equivalent amount of paint in a tube. And um, I highly recommend those as well. They're running about $9 a stick now, so not cheap, but it's about... I would say it's it's about a 15 ml tubes worth of pigment in one of those sticks. They're not great for drawing with, but they are excellent for slicing up and putting in your palette. And um, they're cheaper because they're all priced the same. So if you find the colors that really granulate from the Primatech line and they have it in a stick, you could save like up to 50% on the price of that pigment. So, you know, you might have to hunt around a little bit and go go through to a couple different brands to get um, to get exactly what you want. Um, let's see if there's any other questions here. Uh, Forever Learning says you can buy Turner from Amazon. No need to buy them from Jerry's Autorama. Yes, you can, but you're going to pay more like $15 a tube if you buy them on Amazon and you'll pay around $5, 5 to $7 a tube if you buy them on Jerry's. So obviously you'd want to keep a, like a shopping list and wait until you have enough to hit free shipping or at least to make it worth the order. Cause I think it's flat rate $10 till you get to 75. Um, so if you're, if you're, you know, like me and you order, um, you need a certain amount of supplies for your business. I just wait, I keep a list and then I wait and I order everything when I have at least $75. And Deborah asks, can you purchase individual pans from Regina's? Yes, you can. They have uh, both the, the, um, the, they, they carry two small flat metal pan options and then they have a standard half pan. Their half pans, I think are around $6. So quite affordable for a full half pan of paint. And, um, there's seven single pigment. I would recommend getting the seven single pigment colors or the five, there's seven single pigments, but I think there's five that I'd recommend getting. I would just not get the, the black and white unless you want them. I think there's a black and white. Um, but then you can really mix from those others. And I think that's that's what I would recommend. But check out the video, the review, and, and uh, then you can decide what you would want. Um... Uh, okay. Yeah. Shipping charges can be pretty expensive, especially nowadays, but you know, before, like before Amazon got really big, I would say like, you know, if you go back 10 years, all of the art supply stores, cheap Joe's Blick, Jerry's Artorama, their free shipping didn't kick in until $200 because I was always ordering from my stu for my studio downtown and I was ordering for the uh, nonprofit where I was an art director and you didn't get free shipping until you hit $200 and you were paying a lot more for shipping back then. You were paying like um, for like the first zero to like, uh, I don't know, zero to $25 would be like $10. And then, you know, it would go up from there. So there wasn't any free shipping until you were spending a couple hundred bucks. So we've got kind of spoiled, I think. And I'm really surprised. I know why Amazon prices on like single tubes of this and that are expensive. It's because they're figuring in that free shipping. We're paying for it. We're just paying for it wrapped into the price. But I feel like our supply stores, they don't jack up their single tube prices quite like Amazon does. So if you are going to buy a lot of like pick and choose, like single pencils, single tubes, single sheets of paper, you're going to do way better on uh, like Jerry's Adorama, Dick Blick or Cheap Joe's or Mary Artist is another really good one. Um, I'm not affiliated with um, with them, but I think they're just I, I am an affiliate of Blick, but I mean, they're not asking me to say anything. I have no affiliation with um, with Mary Artist and I used to be sponsored by Jerry's Adorama and I have a signature set with them. But any I shop around. They're all wonderful companies to order from and I they haven't risen their prices that much I don't think in the past you know 20 years and they've added free shipping at a lower threshold so it does seem high now but it's not not as high as it used to be uh if I missed your question I apologize you can pop it in again uh 
Oh, let's see. Jinx asked, have you tried the Daniel Smith iridescent paints? I have not. I am very happy with the metallic watercolors I already have. So um, I probably wouldn't pay the prices of them just because, you know, those Paul Rubens are tough to beat and uh, they're so slow wearing that I can't see myself ever running out of them. Uh, and if I did, I don't know. I think there's just ones I would try before that. <laughs> somebody said please have demo videos for all the prompts oh i don't know that would keep me busy for a couple of years i think <laughs> all right go back to the end again see if i've missed any marcy asks could you recommend a sketch pad for drawing um i like to have the option on my on my sketchbooks that I can add paint to them if I want to. So I would say in a, like an affordable sketchbook that you wouldn't feel bad if you just drew in it, but you could also do some watercolor in would be, I think I got, do I have one behind me? Uh, well, I might've, I might've finished the last one I had out, but um, Arteza has a cloth bound watercolor sketchbook and the paper is 90 pounds. So it's kind of thin, <clears throat> but it is, so it's not great if you're going to paint and do both sides. Like I wouldn't be able to do both sides on that without having some, some, Oh, you know what I think? I did have one. What did I do with it? All oh, right, here. Here's one. This is what it looks like. It comes in lots of different sizes, but um, it is like here's just a uh, here's just um, like a tube of paint I drew. Thing is, you don't want to have. I, I wouldn't do stuff on facing pages if you really liked the artwork because like it will smear. It can smear onto the other side. Like if you have pencils, but um, it takes watercolor fine. You can see I, it'll take mixed media fine, but you can also just do drawings with it. And um, it's got a very subtle texture to it. And it's not that expensive. You can get it in multi-packs as well. These were a lot of last year's World Watercolor Month prompts, actually. <laughs> That's funny. Um, but these are a workhorse. They're very affordable. And I would recommend that. You can find them on Amazon for the same price or less as you can from Arteza.com. So just... Uh, just check that out. This is what they look like. They're called watercolor books, I believe. Hard, hardbound watercolor books from Arteza. And they're quite affordable. I would definitely, I think they're, they're cheap enough that they're not precious and you'll use them. Oh, Claudette says Mary Artist has free shipping. Wonderful. I, I think the threshold is around $100. I've, I've ordered from there a few times. But maybe they've done something differently now. I don't know. But they're very fast. I think they're like in Minnesota or Wisconsin or something. All right. Oh, yeah. You know what? I didn't think about Prime being free shipping with smaller orders. So that might be that might be not as bad. It seems like whenever I see art supplies, though, like a single sticker or a single pencil or a single tube, it's got like $3.99 shipping or something added to it. But maybe there's some on Prime that I haven't seen. I rarely am a Prime member. I am right now for the next few days because I got a free trial and I wanted to see what was uh, what the fuss about Prime Day was. Oh, uh, Berlina um, says YouTuber Alice Lim has a series of videos on how to create your own super granulating colors using single pigment granulating colors. Yeah, she has a, also like a deep dive on the Schmincke super granulating colors too. So that would be a good, a good resource too if you're looking for those Schmincke colors in particular. All right. Okay, I think that I am caught up. Mary Artist, Marcy, it's M-E-R-R-I-A-R-T-I-S-T. -R -R -I -I Mary with an I, artist. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that makes sense. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, this was, I, I love doing World Watercolor Month. The next challenge I'll probably do will be Inktober. Um, I've got some thoughts about Inktober and I'm um, looking forward to that, but I definitely am also looking forward to a couple months where I do not have to create extra artwork every day. Um, thank you for watching this. I appreciate you hanging out with me. I can't believe we've been almost an hour here. But uh, yeah, you can find still photos of all of these over on my Instagram account. And I might post still photos on my blog as well. Um, we'll see how, how it wants to handle that. Sometimes my blog doesn't like to handle that much uh, imagery. But 
uh, it was a lot of fun and I'm so glad that I took part again this year. And I hope you give a month long challenge a try sometime yourself if uh, you think it would be beneficial. I think it's very beneficial to people. And with that, I will bid you adieu. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up before you go. And in the comments after the video is done, please post what uh, project you would love to see as a full length tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.